Mr. Albert Castilla. Before we start, I'm, we've been gone a long time. I missed you all so much. And, uh, so I feel I have to do this because we've been locked down for a while, so I have to do this one. Okay, I'm ready.
was teaching guitar lessons by Zoom for the last year. It sucked. I can't stomach another one of these.
He's had to get me out of trouble. Um, I put out this album, and uh, my previous record label didn't like the album. I'm not going to name names, but you can Google it. And uh, they didn't want, they didn't like the record. And uh, and uh, my, well, it's all right, it's all right, it's America. Yeah. Although this label is from Germany, so it really has nothing to do with America. But anyway, so. We were at a stalemate, we were fighting, we were, this record was, meant a lot to me because I had just found out that I had a daughter and two grandchildren. It's like, you know, and don't worry, it wasn't no Jerry Springer thing. It was, I, I liked it, I was all with it. I didn't run away, I didn't say deny anything. It was, but this stuff was heavy. And, uh, and, I, and the, the music, I didn't want to compromise it at all. And Mike jumped in and he bought the record and we put it out on his label at the at Gulf Coast Records. And it, uh, it charted, and it charted on uh, Billboard five times, and peaked at number two. Yeah! And a solid number two. That doesn't sound good. A, a, a number two. Because number one was, was Mavis Staples, right? If it was William Shatner's blues album, number one, then that would have been not so good. I would retire and just give up the business. But it was a solid number two. And... The moral of the story, if there are any young musicians in the audience, is that if, if and a record label thinks your, your music sucks, chances are it's pretty good, and they don't know what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying, Junior? Don't give up. Yeah. Never. Never. Stick it to the man. So this is a song from, the, uh, from that album, that, uh, which is called Masterpiece. And it's a song called Bring on the Rain.
about a year and a half ago when this all started, my wife started very, she was very optimistic about things, very positive person. She's like, you know, Albert, you've been gone for so long, 15, 20 years, you've been on the road 200 days a year. Now we get to be with each other all the time. It's gonna be great. We got, I got a list of things we can do together. And uh, we're gonna be together all the time and it's just gonna be lovely and uh, I love you so much. We're gonna get through this. And then uh, last week, uh, second to last day before I went on the road, I, I said good morning and she said, is it time for you to leave yet? And I said, no. I said, well, why don't you leave a day early? I'll, 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 flip the, I'll pay for the rooms for the extra night. Get the hell out of my house. Yep. So this song is kind of about that. It's about the last year that we were together and we got through it. And she, to be honest, in all fairness, she carried the load for us. But, uh, but that's what you do. When they're the real deal, they got your back. And so this song embodies that. This is a song called Quit Your Bitchin'. Yeah. It's a love song. It's an aria. Thank you. 
I'm in Thornton, New Hampshire. Yeah. With some friends of mine. Yeah. Those are just my friends. We're having a good time. So. I'm having a great time. Just enough to not piss you off. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna finish the set, we're gonna play, and we're gonna finish the set, and Mike Zio's gonna play, and then, uh, and uh, me and uh, Jimmy Carpenter and Brad Benton are gonna get a drink. What, what are you talking about? What did you say about Jimmy? What'd you call him? Man, what's with the hostility? Don't call him that, quit calling him that. That's disrespectful to him and to mothers everywhere. What's the problem? I know he still owes me money for that last gig, but that's all right. He's good for it. Look, it's only a couple of thousand dollars. What a big deal. Now listen. She hurts. She don't like it. Listen here. He's my friend. I've known him man, longer than I've known you. So, quite frankly, you ain't my mama. You can't tell me what to do. Yeah, I'm bad. I'm a bad mother. Look, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let the temperature level get get higher than it is already. But I go out with whoever I want. He's my friend, and you can't change my mind. Bros before, you know, you know. I didn't say anything. I, I stopped it. Bros before anyone. What are you going to do? Oh, you're going to go out. Ooh, big hairy deal. Who you going out with, yo mama? Your lawyer. Yeah, I'm still here. You know, me and Jimmy were never really that close. In fact, I never heard of him. I don't know who he is. I don't even know what he's doing on my stage. It's really, you know. <laughs> I said nothing. Look, I'm gonna go back to the crib after the show. I'll, I'll be, uh, you know, I love you. you know, I, I, I may have been hasty. Um, I'm just gonna watch the show now. I'll be back uh, by midnight. 11:30. All right, 11. I love you. Now this story is Mike Zito's story. It's his song. It's really his story. I'm very happy. He's the one with the problems. Where is he? He's locked up.
Don't want no trouble at all. For an itty bitty woman, or man, you think you're ten feet tall. Crazy, crazy, crazy. It's all I get from you.
so great to be back. Get your ass in the van. We like to save the love songs for later on in the set. Searching the desert. All right, this is cool. It's like a, it got a club feel to this. You're screaming out, screaming out obscenities and uh, requests. That's great. Let's see if we have it on our list here, sir. Thanks for coming to the uh, Sugar Shack. It's the outdoor version of the Sugar Shack. Sands the pancakes in the maple syrup. Move your ass down here. Come play with me. Move your ass down to Florida. Come play with me. 